everyone welcome to our kitchen this is our sunshine foods channel my name is Joy Fido and today I'm gonna be showing you how to cook some great African foods which is why we call it sunshine foods exciting times so welcome aboard okay so what are we cooking today we're gonna be cooking what we call stew we Nigerians in particular we call it stew but typically to anybody who's not used to it we can call it the red sauce why because I know my children they tend to not understand the way we name our foods back home in Nigeria so if you say to them sauce they're excited so today we're gonna to be cooking the red sauce or stew as we call it with white basmati rice basmati on the line because that's the rice we're gonna be cooking with today's stew okay so what's gonna be in this stew now when it comes to stew there's so many things you can use in making stew you can make fish stew you can make chicken stew you can make beef stew today we're gonna to be making oxtail stew oxtail and um, we call it shaki but typically it's called trap so that's all you're going to be seeing in our stew today okay so the ingredients we need we're looking at the stew first before we get to the basmati rice ingredients um main thing is the tomatoes plum tomatoes you can also use the chopped tomatoes it doesn't matter but because we're going to blend it so whichever tomatoes you can use french tomatoes as well um, we tend to use that a lot in Nigeria. This is a bit difficult to find most times back home. So fresh tomatoes will be ideal. Um, then onions. Now I read somewhere there's so many types of onions. So any onion is fine. Um, salt. Uh, spices or herbs. Um, we're going to be trying, we just throw one bay leaf into it or two. Then, of course, maggi for taste and seasoning. And um, the next big ingredient will be the meat. Oh, garlic. I haven't shown you garlic. So, garlic you will need. Normally, they come like that. And that's it for ingredients. There's no. Oh, hold on. We need oil. So, we need uh, oil. Again, different types of oil. It could be this particular one is a sunflower oil, it could be granite oil. Um, olive oil, there's so many types of oil you can cook with. So you prepare your garlic, um, normally I just cut the skin off that they're ready. You could add it into your blending, which we're going to do, or you mm -hmm. can cut it on its own. But I'm going to add it to the blending. Okay, so again, we prepare the onions ready for blending. Okay, so I've just uh, cleaned the onions, removed the dry part, and then you just cut it. Now what I'm going to do, I'll put just a little bit into the sauce itself, so I'm not going to take a lot of that, just a little bit, and then the rest are the ones I'm going to blend. So when you're blending, you don't need them cut into small, small pieces. And I chose the ring design. It, it just, this is just about designing, this part doesn't mean anything. You can chop them into fine pieces or you can create rings doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is how Maggi comes and it's for seasoning. So you just unwrap it and get it ready for the food. So you open your tomatoes, get your opener. There's so many types of openers. Just use the one that works for you. So you blend, uh, ready to blend. All the onions goes in. 
Kurungan dua nukius. Tomatoes goes in. We drop some maggi in it. So we're gonna use just two maggi to add in the tomato for blending. Why? Because we want it to have the same taste. We want it to blend really well into the sauce. Now we're ready to blend. So I put some um, herbs into the blend, just a little bit, not too much. That was basil. Now I'm pulling sage. to add that to your blend um generally people try to add different things so it's up to you what you want your sauce to taste like there's red pepper the regular this is the really hot pepper but you can put the sweet peppers which are so many different types so i'm adding two scotch bonnet to give it a bit of heat there's so many things you can do with the red sauce or the stew if you are here in the UK in, in America or in Europe in the West we have the tin tomatoes remember we talked about it today we're actually filming in France and so one of the shops is Carrefour so just look out for the fresh tomato image that tells you this is plum tomatoes now if you're in Nigeria most countries in Africa Pure fresh tomatoes, fresh, they are all there, ready to be used. And then the sweet peppers. Now peppers come in so many types. Whatever pepper you want to go for is fine. But when you're working with the fresh foods, what you do, make sure you boil this properly. You have to boil it to take out the water for your sauce to taste good. So I hope this makes sense. So if you're working with fresh things, boil it off really well before you can actually cook with it now who knows one of the days when we're in nigeria we're going to do that video that will explain what we mean by that but today we're not working with fresh we're working with the plum tomatoes okay so we're ready for our sauce now empty pot and then you pour your oil in it So that's about the amount of oil I'm using. Um, the amount of oil you use will depend on how much meat you're willing to put in there and how much tomatoes you're going to put into your food. So, or into your sauce. Do not pour too much oil if the rest of the ingredients are not going to be much. So I really can't gauge and tell you this is about how much oil you want to put in. So our oil is gone in. Now, it's on, the fire is on, so it starts to get heated. While it's getting heated, this is our protein or meat. Um, one of our videos we did, we had lots of comments about vegetarian food and people who don't like meat and all that. You can, you can use anything in your stew. You can use fish, you can use chicken. Um, there are so many other vegetarian sources of protein. You can use any of that. In my house, my husband is a huge fan of meat. So we tend to use meat a lot, but I'm not a huge fan of meat. I prefer fish. So maybe another time we'll do a video on fish. 
okay so from my nutritional point of view remember i am a nutritionist in my own way you don't want that oil to get too heated if you if it gets too hot it turns into poison so don't leave your oil to heat up too much so just as it's getting slightly hot you put some salt in it not too much salt gauge your salt again depending on how much ingredients you have in your food salt has gone in next thing next thing that's going in so we'll put salt salt is in the oil next thing that's going in is the onions so you now you want to make sure it's not too hot because if it was too hot it would just make this huge sound then you just know that it's not safe anymore and you also don't want it to be all burnt if it was too hot all this onion will be burnt you can see it's just cooking nicely so that's going in now the next thing i would do is i start putting the meat into it remember the meat we're using today is oxtail and chai so you start putting your meat into your oil into the oil so the next question I know people may ask me is how did you prepare the meat we've done quite a few videos showing how you steam your meat ready for cooking normally salt spices herbs anything that will give it taste maggi all of that helps and you don't do anything else you just allow the meat to cook And once it's all done you just leave it ready for what you want to do you want to make soup our kind of soup again another form of sauce or you want to make stew okay so all the meat has gone in now probably you're thinking why the meat first it just helps to hold this meat the oil and the meat helps to come together helps the oil helps to hold the meat together you know like if we're thinking of frying fish or frying meat this is what this is trying to do it's kind of like frying this without necessarily frying and that's why i personally prefer to do this there are people who don't do this. They will rather put the sauce in first, being the tomato and all of that that we blended. But I prefer to put the meat first and just allow it to cook a little bit in the oil. So at this stage, I will add my maggi as well. Remember, we put some. So what I do, I break it and let it just go onto everything. Then I'll put a hint of herbs, not too much. Whatever herbs you're working with, just put a hint of them. Again, you stir. So now this is ready for me to add my add my tomato paste um it's just a tomato mix remember we use the plum tomato and mixed it with blended it with everything else now i mentioned tomato paste that's something completely different and that would be when we do this video in nigeria i'll show you what that is so you pour everything in And now you just tear it. Now remember we said red sauce. So some people like to see this really red. That's where the tomato paste comes in. But if you're all very conscious about what you put in your belly or in your body, tomato paste I don't know what ingredients are in them so 
think of your health when you're applying some things but for color sake tomato paste does that job but for health sake i wouldn't really recommend it fresh tomatoes plum tomatoes that should do and so now you allow it to cook okay so what you do remember we covered it and we stirred everything in place so now give it about five minutes to really cook and you just open it and you check on the whole because you steamed your meat and it's already cooked all you're trying to do here is to allow the sauce to blend into the meat so do not apply too much heat at this stage let it just slowly cook into the meat about 10 minutes check again okay remember bay leaves mostly just for taste or scent that's what we use bay leaf for so i'm going to just drop a few drops of it like three of it and i'll just tear it in now you can see how this is really cooking remember your heat is low not too high such that it allows the sauce to blend into the meat and give it that beautiful gorgeous taste that we want to experience our sauce now look at that can you see the little clumps of oil in different corners see how the oils have settled in different corners that's to show you that the tomatoes has boiled and the oil is now overpowered the tomatoes so this is why you remember we're talking about um, thin, um, fresh tomatoes how you have to allow it to boil off if there's a lot of water in the sauce you will not see the oil but once you start seeing the oil that means your sauce has cooked off really nicely and now it's ready to eat so this is done you can now put your heat off or if you just want to for the sake of it lower it to the lowest but for this we are happy this is done And that little spoon when I want to taste for everything. So I scoop a little bit and you could put it in a container or anywhere you like. And I'm going to take it and I'll put it, taste it. Everything is just perfect. fantastic so again different ways you can taste for salt or taste or anything some people could go with the main spoon get put it in their hand and taste that's another way because then you know in setting when you put in your mouth back into the pot so our sauce is ready okay so we've got our empty pot and we want to start cooking our basmati rice so that's gone in remember our bag of rice you need to just pour some in now think about how many people are going to eat this you could pour it into a cup and just measure it but i don't really spend that much time on these things I just go straight to it. so that's the amount of rice I'm gonna cook what are in your rice now basmati is actually one of those really difficult rice to cook lots of people stay away from basmati because they think it's too hard to cook so this is why I'm doing this video my daughter in particular she's in uni and she says i would love to eat basmati but i don't know how to cook it okay so i put a lot of water in washed it and i just poured that out
So that's my rice just washed. You can wash it twice if you want to, but not necessary. There's really no need for it. So once it's washed, next stage I'm gonna add water ready for cooking. Now I've added water. Again, I just want to take a bit out, not because I really would have loved to, but it was just a bit too much. So you want to make sure your water is like about half, half of the rice. This is what I mean. See the rice and the water on top of it is about, let's say half and half, half water, half rice. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the best way I can explain it. Okay, so our rice is in the pot. Remember the water content. And then now you put your salt. Again, be careful. Salt is not very healthy for all of us. We don't want too much salt, but you want it to just hold it a little bit. So a hint of salt in it, and that's, that's all you need to do with basmati. So what happens here is you allow the heat to be high. So you make the heat high at the starting point. So it's going to cook and I'll show you when we change direction on this. That's all you need now for basmati. Put water in, put it on fire, high heat, leave it for now. Okay, so watch your rice. Once it starts to boil, you can see it bubbling. That's all you need for Basmati. Next thing, you just reduce your heat really low, really, really low. Now, what happens is the rice starts to steam. That's all there is to basmati. It starts to steam. Give it time, and it'll be ready in no time. So you cover it. Generally, can you see now that this rice is all? Look at that. That's all you needed. Just reduce the heat and it just steams. And it takes about two minutes, one minute, done. To check rice, dip your spoon into it or fork and lift it. If there's no drip of water, that shows that the underneath of the pot is really dry. And that's it. Push it away from your cooker, depending on the type of cooker you have. Because what happens, where people make mistakes is they leave that on there and as it's cooling down, it's still cooking. And what happens, it starts to burn. So once you move it away, it's completely done, rice is okay. And that's it, done. Okay, so there you have it. We finished with our gorgeous, gorgeous meal. Basmati rice. What we did, we added some plantain which we didn't show you how it was done but we've done a video in the past where we showed how plantain is done or dodo as we like to call it or fried dodo so we will do another video in future again showing how this particular design this is like the diced version of what we showed in the past it all comes to add color to your food so basmati rice diced dodo here we added some vegetables to make it interesting. So there we have tomatoes, green pepper, red pepper. These are bell peppers and then some cucumbers. And then of course the meat, the tripe and the oxtail. So lovely meal and we have a glass of wine to go with it. If you happen to be someone who enjoys your wine. I personally like red wine so it could be white wine. Usually when it comes to wine, they have their different things that goes with what. The one that goes with meat, the one that goes with fish, but we're not into wine right now. So that's our meal all done. So hope you're going to try this at home and we would love to see this. If you enjoyed this meal, try it and send us pictures. We'd like to see what you are getting from what we are sharing with you. So thank you so much for watching. I hope we were able to bring something new to you today. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the next video, which will be very soon. But remember to like us, remember to share our video with your friends, remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe because so many more things are coming your way. Thank you so much and God bless you.